Bonjour! Aujourd'hui, I'm talking about Perfume, the Story of a Murderer by Patrick Suskind. This was published originally in German in 1985 and was translated into English the next year by John E. Woods. What can I even say about this book? It's very morbid, um, quite grotesque, uh, and I absolutely love it. Um, so it follows this character called Jean-Baptiste Crenouille, um, who was born in a fish market um, under the table and then his mum was guillotined for leaving him there to die, pretty much. Um, so he was brought up in foster care and was never really loved. Um, he didn't ever get to experience affection, um, was just kind of like put through his systems and then sold. But Jean-Baptiste had a weird skill in that he had an incredible sense of smell. Absolutely phenomenal. He categorised all of the scents he'd ever smelt. He could smell things from miles away. He had a natural understanding of how scents should go together, um, which proved useful later on in his life. He also doesn't have a personal scent, uh, which is quite a big part of the book and part of his um, struggles with his identity is that he can't smell himself, um, he just doesn't produce scent. And he has a lot of, um, well, pretty much disgust um, for humanity. Uh, like, he starts out in Paris um, and the, the descriptions um, of, like, how rancid um, the streets were and the people and how everyone just stank all the time um, really like strong evocative descriptions. Um, he, he like hated them for that. Um, but he also like definitely has a chip on his shoulder about not having his own scent to the point where he creates like a fake human scent for him out of like cat shit, um, and some nice things. Uh, and kind of, it's quite funny because he kind of like adds all of these, um, things that range from being like lovely floral things to like literal cat shit. Um, and it just smells like a human because he understands what a human smell is composed of. So Conway, he is walking through the streets of Paris one day, um, and he smells like the most incredible scent, um, and manages to track it down. And it is this beautiful red haired woman. Um, and he is just like, so absorbed by her um, that he ends up suffocating her and just like trying to get all of the scent out of her. All of his sensory enjoyment um, is is from the sense of smell. So this is just like perfection manifested. Um, and he ends up killing this girl and then he's really sad that the, the scent disappears um, after a while. So he practically makes it his mission um, to be able to acquire the scent of particular humans, uh, specifically like these ones that produce these magnificent scents. He works as an apprentice to a perfumer in Paris um, for quite a while, helping him like rebuild his business and learning about like distilling techniques and stuff like that. Um, and then he takes a very long time to get to the south of France to a town called Grasse, uh, which is near Cannes, which is the kind of perfume capital of the world, uh, where he learns kind of further processes. If I say any more, I'll probably spoil it for you. Um, but basically this book goes from the very start of his life to the very end of his life um, and all the kind of situations he's in on the way. He's definitely a sociopath. Um, he's described a lot as like a mite, like he is this mite that has just survived. And one of the things I love about this book is that anytime he leaves a situation, um, it just tells a couple of paragraphs about what happened to the people he left and how they like came to their demise pretty much. Like his, the wake of, of Jean-Baptiste Crenouille is just destruction. The ending to this book is quite controversial. I think um, it probably pulls quite a few people out of the mood of the book and it's um, their kind of like faith in it. Uh, but I, I really liked it, to be honest. I like it a lot. There was also a film that came out um, based on this book in 2006 with Ben Whishaw um, and it's a fantastic film. Like, I I know this is something that is very rarely said, but I think the film was better than the book. And the book is incredible. Um, and the film is, is very faithful. It basically takes out um, a lot of like chaff that really didn't need, that makes the book a great book, but wouldn't make a good film. Uh, for example, in the book, he's like, lives in a cave for seven years for no real reason, which is part of his like narrative as a, as a person in the novel, um, but wouldn't really fit in the film. Uh, so the film is fantastic. Like if you can't be bothered to read this book, watch the film, it's really good. But the main thing I want to talk about with this um, is just its ingenuity. It is such a good idea to focus on 
a human sense. Um, and the sense of smell is kind of undervalued. Like it's mentioned in, in the book, you can't get away from smell, which is something I've never really thought about before. You know, you can't put on headphones or close your eyes um, against smell. Uh, I mean, can you? It's not something we do out of practice for any reason. And besides the world of perfumery, it's like a sense that isn't very well documented. Um, and it's not something that the average person really thinks or knows a lot about um, how scents work and how we perceive scents. But the book puts forth the idea that uh, we do a lot of subconscious calculations of scent, um, which is fascinating and probably true. Um, it's great because there's like all of these these women that he craves the scent of. Um, he's like, oh, people, people will follow her around forever and they will think it is because of her looks. They will think that she is like the most stunning human being ever, but they don't realise that they are encapsulated with her scent um, and they just don't have uh, the, the skills and breadth of knowledge that Grinwee does um, to to really acknowledge that. It's also super cool seeing that play into Grinwee as a character. So he doesn't have a scent naturally, uh, which means that he um, isn't observed very often. Like he's not someone you'd notice in the street. He's so he's so like nondescript, and he attributes that to his smell. Um, so he makes perfumes um, for himself that give him different um, senses of authority and different perceptions in public space. So he has like one that will make him seem like a normal trusting person um, and but he'll also have ones where like if he needs to command authority um, he can use that perfume. You would never think of like using scent to manipulate people beyond smelling good, you know? It is fascinating and it's made me think um, beyond like the fact that most people um, haven't been taught um, anything about scent because it's not taught or um, thought about a lot um, or educated in um, we don't we're not taught to think about smell so we don't do that passively very often you just kind of categorize things as um, good or bad or you smell something you're like oh that reminds me of you know you get little deja vus and stuff like that but it's never uh, really considered it's made me want to be a perfumer you know it's made me want to like understand this whole undercurrent of um of like the world we live in that isn't really addressed otherwise. I don't have much more to say on this novel. Um, it's really great. I read it before. I read it um, maybe like eight years ago, quite a while ago. Um, and I've always wanted to come back to it. And now I have. I'm happy I have um, because it is fantastic. I also have a copy of The Pigeon, which is a novella he wrote, the only other um, piece of work he has published, as far as I know, in English. Um, and I only read like 20 pages of it and then, I don't know, got distracted. So I might try and get back to this. It didn't absorb me in the way that this is like obviously such a seminal piece. I totally didn't mention that this is historical fiction um, and I need to definitely go back on what I said in a video a while ago saying that I don't read or don't like historical fiction because I definitely do. I was just kind of thinking of a very specific like young adult historical fiction where it's like oh let's be in you know Victorian England but 16 year olds and see how we get like I don't care about that but this is um in the 18th century um of France so everything did smell gross just the prose of Grommy describing the scents back then and it's also just like his mediations on humanity um and death uh and and allure and an arousal and stuff like that just really great uh, would highly recommend although if you don't like a touch of morbidity um you may not like it which is fine um i'd be really interested to hear from you if you read this and didn't like it hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll see you for another one soon bye